Hey, it's Dry Bear. Now, I just put out a video covering the rarities in Diablo 4, the scalers with tier, as well as aspects, imprinting, extracting, and how to get good gear for the gear in the game and how all that works. But someone asked me a very good question in that concept of how do I find the right stats for the gear? I get how the rarity works now. I get how the imprinting and the legendary powers work and how I put my build together. But how do I go about getting the right stats on my gear pieces which slots can have which stats, and how do I know when I have something worthwhile? So today, I'm going to be explaining exactly that. But first, you should come hang out with me on my live stream. I'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. If you don't come hang out with me and the community, then the next time you're settled in, you're going to get up and go to the kitchen to get something. But as you arrive in the room, you're going to forget completely what it is that you needed. So you'll go back to where you were sitting, settle back in and get comfortable only to remember what it was that you needed to get. So you have to get back up again. All right, let's dive into that very important question. I get how legendary aspects are imprinted. I get that rare items are just as good as legendary items. And when I find a good rare item that I like with the right stats, I can imprint aspects from my inventory onto that rare item to make it a best in slot legendary. Meaning dry bear, how do I look at an item and decide whether it's good for me or it's bad for me if it's something that I could sell to someone else when it's a rare item that's really strong and how do I know what I'm looking at? So let's explain. There is a large list of stats that can appear on items. All of these are listed inside of your core stats and offensive stats, your defensive stats, utility stats, etc., as well as class stats that exist for your character. All these do different things, and depending on what you're looking for in your build, what scales well with your build, you want to be able to maximize these to get the most benefit. Some builds need high attack speed. Some builds need high critical strike chance. Some already have high crit chance and want critical strike damage. Overpower builds, we're going to want overpower damage because it scales their burst damage. You may want vulnerable damage. Most builds will be running vulnerable. Perhaps you're making a thorns build and you want to stack as much thorns as you possibly can, which means you need to know what items have thorns on them and how to maximize getting the most amount of thorns for your build. Maybe you need potion capacity. All of these stats exist in some form or some way, and many of them can get uh, applied through your gear specifically. But as I do with most of my videos, let's start at the very beginning, the basics, and we'll work our way up so we don't leave anyone else behind. There are inherent stats, basic stats that come factory loaded onto an item, and this is based on the item slot. So if you look at the uh, actual tooltip for this item piece here, looking from top to the bottom, we have the name of the item plus the legendary power that it includes. So these are primal sabatons. They include the wind striker legendary, which is just the orange text at the bottom that gives it its power. That's what I described in the previous video. However, scrolling down further, we have whether the tier and rarity of it, Sacred Legendary Boots. We have the item power, which just has a loose general representation of how strong the item is. We have an upgrade level that tells you how many times it's been upgraded. Then we have these big gray line dividers in between two major sections. This is the differentiator that we're about to talk about. The first line divider separates out the inherent stats, the stats that are less random, or in some cases not random at all, or the item, the item stats that cannot be altered in any way. These are the item stats that are inherent, the characteristics that come with the item, and based on the slot that it's in or the type of item, these will change. And I've gone ahead and done you the solid of summarizing those all on the screen right now. So you can screenshot this, save it for later, but these are all of the inherent stats that come with the type of item. If you're looking for thorns, you're going to want to use a shield. It has thorns on it. If you're looking for uh, spirit cost reduction for druids, totems as an offhand have that rather than a two-hander. Your boots can have one of three inherent aspects, max evade charge, evade gives movement speed, or when you deal damage with attacks, it lowers the cooldown of your evade. Legs can make your potion either grant you a barrier or restore resource. Pretty cool and awesome there. Based on the type of weapon, it'll give you different inherent stat on it. Vulnerable damage for crossbows, damage to distant enemies for bows. And then for your amulets and rings, they all have resistance on them no matter which one you're talking about. Ele it'll be have two different elements on the ring. Amulets always have all resistances. 
and then you have chest, gloves, and helm have no inherent bonuses at all. These are the ones that are above the fold, above that gray line divider that come on every single one of these items. They can vary in, in value, but they will always be there until we get a patch or something changes. This is where it comes from. So if one of these is important to your build, it may force you into using one of these specific things in order to get that out of your gear. Now, below the fold, below that, that second gray divider are the stats that can appear on that item slot in general. These are random. There is a large selection list for each item that drops, and it can pick from these and have a range of values as well. So the four or three stats that you see listed down here are pulled from a list that are viable for that kind of item in that slot, and it'll randomize. So when you get a drop of something that you need, you can see that these are focuses. They're always going to have cooldown reduction on the top fold of that. But this one has cooldown reduction down below, fortified generation, life on kill. This one has life on kill, lucky hit chance, healing received, crit strike against injured enemies. So they're all going to have different stats on them. Some will have skills, like these gloves give plus three to blood lance. These gloves give plus two to sever. So depending on what your build is, you may want different stats below that fold line so that you can use those in your build. And then you can also add on the legendary powers and aspects on top of that to specify the build that you need. And while this may not be that well described in game, there is an awesome resource that someone has created that shows what stats come on what items in what slot so that you can use that when you're making a build. I use it all the time when I'm making my build, say I want a high CDR build, I'll know exactly where the CDR slots come from so that I can pick up those items. And when I know an amulet drops, I wanna have cooldown reduction on it. If it doesn't, I'll pay attention to that. Same thing for Helm, same thing for the offhand focus. If it will have the stat on it that I need, I absolutely need it. Movement speed on boots is a big one. Damage reduction on chest is a big one. All of these are very important to pay attention to. And that resource that I use is Diablo4.cc. Someone has been kind enough to put this uh, database up online for free that has all of these resources and data available for you. You can go through the website. It has tons of data information. This is just a repository essentially for all the info in the game, but it also is one of the few places that exists right now that shows item affixes and where they appear. So you can go to the affix thing. I'll have a link for this down below in the description. It's diablo4.cc uh, slash us slash affix. Then it has all the item stats in the game, shock skill damage, cutthroat skill damage for rogues, cooldown reduction, overpower damage, maximum mana, potion capacity, drop rate, shrine buff duration, thorns, plus thorns on different pieces, plus armor, mana cost reduction, all of these bonuses that can appear on items, they are restricted. So for example, our early example, we wanted to know if I need high cooldown reduction for my build, how do I get that? Well, we go over here and we can control F or just find it with our eyeballs. We see X percent cooldown reduction is an affix that can appear on items. Click on this drop down. This drops down and it says, okay, cool. I can find X percent cooldown reduction on amulets, totems for druids, focuses for necromancers, focuses for sorcerers, helms, and shields. So I need it on my offhand, I need it on my helm, and I need it on my amulet. So when an amulet drops and I'm looking for cooldown reduction and it doesn't have it on it, I have two choices. Either I throw that item out or I have to go to the occultist to re-roll the stat that is on that. As an example, if I need trap cooldown reduction for rogues, that's only going to appear on amulets and gloves. The website itself also has a uh, class affix category. So if you're looking for uh, a specific ability or a specific passive, say you're playing Barbarian and you want ranks of Rend, that will only appear on gloves. So you're looking for a glove drop that's yellow, that has plus two or plus three ranks of rend for that ability. Hammer of the Ancients only appears on gloves. Double Swing only appears on gloves. Now, this will probably get uh, updated over time, hopefully, and there might be changes that Blizzard makes just to balance the game if they feel like some stats are too limited in one area. But this is a great place to start when you're making a build to see, okay, I want to get the, ma the maximum skill level for uh, X skill. Then you have a starting point to come look for this. There are unique as aspects that appear on items that aren't listed in here um, that you'll just have to be aware of. The theoretical max for getting to highest skill level, I believe, is plus 18. So it's not like you're only going to be able to get these here. 
there are plenty of ways to get them. So this isn't an exhaustive list. I found things that are missing from this list in general. But again, it's a good place to start when you're looking for major stats. And the basic affects is more or less accurate from what I've experienced in game. So this is where you'll go to figure out where you want these bonus items and where you're going to get them. So back in game, we know that there's going to be a guaranteed stat that exists inherently on an item based on the kind of item it is and the slot that it exists in. And there's going to be random stats of random value that will appear on these items based on uh, the rarity that you roll, the RNG that you get when the item drops. You have the option to go to the occultist in game and re-roll one of these stats. So find the occultist in game. It has this uh, this little triune looking symbol. You'll find it in different towns. You'll find the occultist here. You go to the occultist, open the occultist up, and you're going to find on the far right tab an enchant tab. You click on this and you can put an item of rare or legendary value on it. And it'll give you a list of all the four stats that are below the second fold, below that line, that can you that you can re-roll. So say you want basic skill damage, you want all stats, and you want intelligence, but you needed something else as the fourth stat. So when an item drops that has three out of four good stats, that's a good item because you could eventually re-roll that item in order to get the right stat that you want. Once you enchant this item, that slot becomes the only slot you can re-roll. You can actually re-roll this infinitely if you wanted to, right? So for this ring here, I have, I've already re-rolled one of the slots here. I've made it into crit chance, and then we have crit damage, vulnerable damage for the bone build that I currently have equipped. So I can only re-roll that one stat. Now I can re-roll it infinitely if I want. However, the more that I re-roll it, the more it's going to cost. It also costs Helltide resources, Forgotten Souls and Fiend Roses. I've already made a video on how important these are and why you should be doing Helltide as often as you can because each time you re-roll an item or fully upgrade an item, you'll be using these resources. You want to have a good store of these because you burn through them pretty fast, especially as you start finishing out your build towards endgame. And you can see I've rolled this enough to make it so the next time I try to re-roll this stat, it'll cost 1.3 million gold just to hit that button. So it starts to get more and more and more expensive. It will keep re-rolling that one slot for stat. Eventually, you'll be able to get what you want, but it will cost more and more and more the more that you do it. So when you ask me, Dry Bear, how do I know if an item drops, whether it's a good yellow that I can make into a good endgame item, or it's a bad yellow that I should throw out, figure out what stats are good, figure out what stats come on that kind of item, and then look at them and decide, does it have at least N minus one number of good stats, which means two or three of the stats are great, and one of them is kind of bad, but you can re-roll it, then that's a good item. Does it have high item power? Is it something that is the right tier that I want? If you're in tier four, you want ancestral. If you're in tier three, you want uh, sacred. And if you're in tier one or tier two, normal items are all you're going to see anyways. So if you're upgrading a tier, you may want the tier to go up with you. You look at the overall item power, and then you look at the stats that come with it to decide if they're good stats or bad stats. And that hopefully answers the question, how do I determine if an item is good or not? How do I change the stats? And where do the stats come from? If you found value in the video, leave a like down below. Come hang out with my live stream crew. We were live every single day. I'd be happy to talk more about this topic with you there if you have any questions or you just want to have a place to hang out or have someone on the background that's playing the game at the same time you are. So come hang out. We'll see you there. Cheers. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.